Chris Bradders, the man in the van who does those videos on the Charlton chat groups and for Charlton Real Talk, we have got one of the greatest players that I've ever seen at Charlton, one of my heroes. I used to love watching him play. The passion was always there. He's one of the heroes from 98 player final. None other than the Welsh legend, John Robinson. Hey, what's up? John Robinson in the van with the man, Bradders. What's happening? So, guys and gals, you want to know about John Robinson's history with us and uh, a few other things. So let's have a little general, general chit chat. John, thank you for joining me today, mate. Pleasure. I appreciate it. Um, your time at Charlton, for me, was great. Brilliant, yeah? You're one of the greatest players I saw at Charlton growing up and everything like that. And I'm not just saying it because you're in the van. <laughs> you actually was. Um, but we all want to know a few things about Charlton. But first of all, tell us about like your time at Charlton and how it came about. Well, it was, um, obviously I played with Curbs, uh, cleaned yeah. his boots, picked up his jock strap, Ooh. was an apprentice, everything like that. The whole lot so that was um, one of the things and then obviously when Robert Lee um, was going to Newcastle they were looking for a replacement looked at it uh, he knew me um, and then my contract was coming to an end at Brighton so yeah. they put a price in to Brian Brian didn't accept it and back in those days you went to a tribunal okay so the tribunal was there and it was set at 75 grand 75 grand. Now, obviously, with new owners for Charlton, <laughs> that's going to be a snip, isn't it, at the moment? I think but it was a snip back then as well. No, years, back then, there's loads of money there. So, yeah. When was that? That was back in, what, 90... That was 92, 92 September 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, Robert Lee went for 750. Yeah, yeah. And I went for 75. Mm, bit of a difference there, eh? There you go. <laughs> what, what was your fondest memory at Charlton? Oh, my God. There's, there's, so, there's many. so many, mate. Honestly, Brad. It's, it's, there is so many from the time probably I signed... To the, to the vision, to when Les Reed came in, yeah. to some of the, even the disappointments were memories because it gave us a strong character. But the players, yeah. the players, coaching staff, and fans, because it's it, it, until you've been here, it's very unique. And I was talking about it the other day to someone. When you look at the testimonials that we had yeah. from Steve Brown, probably Richard Rufus, myself, Keith Peacock, um, what else is there? Obviously, Curbs had one. Yeah. Um, Scotty Parker was there a long time. I mean, people were there a long time. Yeah. Five, six, six, seven years. Um, not heard of. So the players, the whole thing, um, and building the club up to from when I went in September '92, went back to the Valley in '92. Um, obviously played in that game, Special which is obviously game. historic, yeah. historic game. Um, and then seeing the stadium build and build with a success story that we were able to have on the pitch. But what was cool is just even the chief exec, Peter Varney, to the community trust people. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jason Morgan is yeah, obviously big, still there now. Big, big part September, of the club, yeah. September, August 92. Massive, massive part of the club. So the memories, obviously the playoff final was a massive memory. Yeah, yeah. A couple of different ways for me coming on from sub, even though I wasn't happy about being sub. No, no, I remember that season that you were so, smashing it and then Neil Heaney yeah. came in, didn't he? Yeah, because I got injured. Yeah. Um, I got injured and then we played a game myself and Mortz were there. We had to play a game behind closed doors at Curbs Arrange and if yeah. we didn't get through that, we weren't going to be set up for selection. What was that like the, when he told you about like the starting lineup and you weren't in it? Or Slammed the door. Told him he wasn't happy in some kind of words. Um, That's a bit of gossip because so, you don't really hear that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so no, I wasn't happy at all because I played all the way up until January, until I got injured every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you were afraid, like, and you never knew if you would ever get on. You didn't, I didn't even know if at the time I'd be sub. Yeah. So, and back then you only had three subs. Yeah, but then, coming on. Yeah. And then, what happened? Yeah, penalty. obviously. You had to take one of the penalties, I had to take the penalty, took the corner for Roof's goal. Yeah. So I was happy about that. Yeah. And then, obviously, the sudden death, the first sudden death penalty. I never scored. Yeah. I never scored a penalty ever. I, I remember seeing an interview you've done with, with the club, actually, funny enough, and you're yeah. saying about this, and the, the walk-up today. Walk-up's like, gone. Yeah, My yeah. legs were like jelly. Mark Byron told me, like, pick a spot yeah. and don't don't think. So the walk-up, looking there, and you know, it's life-changing for so many oh, different people, doubt, for fans doubt. and everything. It's the biggest game in the world. And what, so, uh, with, with all those memories and everything, would yeah. you say, because you didn't even mention Premiership then, there's always that Premiership game that highlighted so many times. I think we spoke about this briefly before. The Man United yeah. game where you scored the equaliser. You run off, right? This yeah. is what I remember. Always seeing it. I remember sitting in the East Stand watching you do it. Running off and you went to run and get the ball because you thought you guys could get the get a fourth. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't actually to get the ball. If you remember, I ran out and I ran behind the goal. Yeah. And I was showing, telling people would like to come. It was actually because I, don't, I think I was subbed that game. 
curbs yeah, dropped yeah. me. <laughs> and I was actually going to go to curbs and give him a what for kind of thing because oh, okay. um, I wasn't happy like I was like really I'm like you dropped me and I come back and we do the score three three but again we had this unbelievable I mean he was yeah we had an unbelievable relationship yeah, yeah. an unbelievable relationship it was like love and hate but it was, I loved him most of the time cool. so it was it was one of those ones big memories for the play yeah for the Man United game and what about um, like obviously going for, on from there uh, when like leaving the club and everything like that, obviously you went off to Cardiff, mm. um, and you only played what one season? Now, is it? Played the yeah, played one season, um, and again curbs. I still had a year to go, but at that point it was I think like I never wanted I never wanted to lose the memories I had in the time, the yeah. respect. So he, he, other clubs came in, but he would only let me go to a club that it was right. And obviously, who was the manager? Yeah, yeah. Lenny Lawrence. Yeah, so as well. So. It yeah. makes sense, really, because he, he, he was a great he, manager as yeah, well. Yeah, he brought Curbs and Gritty in. Yeah, uh, but from then, obviously, retiring and stuff like that, mm. obviously, we, you've got your soccer academy that we'll talk about in a moment, but um, now, Charlton now, um, obviously, since your days, I think we've had ups and downs, very low downs with uh, a regime that was in charge. Hopefully, yeah. you know, they've got a new takeover coming on. Things are going to progress even more, but... Um, what do you think of like uh, Bowyer coming in and what he's done so Brilliant. far? And Look at the two managers. That's a yeah. simple fact. Look at the two managers that come in that have actually brought the club together. Yeah. And I'm on about backroom staff. I'm on about fans. I'm on about everything like that. Pauli. Yeah. And Bow. Without a doubt. Okay. And what have they got? They've got history and understand the club. You have to have people that understand this club. Yeah. It's unique from the supporters, even from the day when they had to come back and give money to get back to the Valley. It wasn't just the chairman, it wasn't the board that had to put the money in, the fans had to raise it. And that yeah. was one of the biggest things, the reason why I signed. I had multiple clubs to choose from, and I signed A, because of Curbs, yeah. and, and obviously Gritty as well, because they both wanted to sign me, but I'd known Curbs, obviously, and I knew the person he was. And also, if the fans have to pay a certain amount, that means, you know what, they're going to be around for a while. Yeah. And we had a vision of where we wanted to be. But 100%, you look at those two managers, brought the clubs together, Bo's done an incre incredible job. Yeah, definitely. Um, under real hard circumstances. He's got recognition from outside of the clubs. When yeah. you look at other clubs who are now sniffing around. Yeah, and doing just things. Well, everyone always says about every single club that comes available. There's a rumor going around that Bo is going to get anything like. But it's always a hearsay. Yeah, it's, it's a hearsay. Like anyway, but as I say, but Bo, I, I, Bo was as I said, he would have probably this club is one of the clubs he would have probably only taken. What was what was he like when uh, when, you, when you was there? Class, Bo. Was, it, was he was he mafia? How he was yeah. growing up. Yeah, no, no. He's, he, he, but he had an edge. And you he, have to he's, have got, he's got an edge now. He's got an edge as a manager, but yeah. He's got passion. Yeah. Right. He's got that. So you wanted him on your team. Yeah. You hated playing against him at five sides or anything like that because yeah. it was proper. Every, all of our things was proper. Everyone wanted it because everyone's character was very the same. Yeah. They never kind of got above themselves. They didn't didn't thing and so Bo had that, which is why he went on to great things with Leeds and obviously played through, through England, same as Powley. Yeah. So they have this complete respect from the players that give them. They've got this experience of going out different things. They've got an idea and vision, but ultimately they also understand that what runs, what is important about the club, um, which is what he did last year. I mean, look at what he did in the player front. Look Definitely. what he did then. So this year's the same. You never guess what the battery just died on my phone, but it's charged up now, so we're back. We're back. But <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Up, it's yeah. real. It's real talk, isn't it? <laughs> real talk. So as we were saying, the Bose has done fantastic and everything like that. Um, what do you think? How do you think the season's going to go? I mean, obviously we're in a bad bit at the moment, and some of the fans. We need to get more positive. We need yeah. to pick it up a bit and uh, get 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 what get it back to how it was at the start of the season. What, what's it like as a player when it's it's down and then the fans start turning, but then you have to get them back. Everyone's got an opinion. That's what I said. Without the fans, you don't have football. Yeah. So you're gonna have you've got to understand that going in, and players do that. Um, Wish obviously go around, but there's circumstances with it. Look at the injuries he's got. Yeah. So everything's just got to be a positive spin. Um, the positive of this, obviously, the club looks like it's got taken over. Yeah. It's still got to be cleared yet. Hopefully, that starts a new buzz. I think fingers crossed. I think fingers crossed it will happen. Yeah. I think it probably is more set in stone. But it's always these interviews. It's always these doubts. Think, yeah, these doubts. But I think they're like further forward than they've ever been. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, so at the end of the day, as I say, yeah, as a player, sometimes you, as a player, you kind of you've been experienced enough not to. Not to kind of look too much because, yeah. as I say, 
two a week in football is a long time. Yeah. So definitely. with the yeah, you just want that positive spin. You want that positiveness. Of course, people aren't happy sometimes when the results. What would you say to the fans so, that will see this um, about being positive? Because my videos that I do, as they already know, I go a little bit crazy sometimes, and I go a little bit hyper. But we're not going to go that crazy. But <laughs> We need to get positive, so a simple sort of message just to the fans, basically. Just to stay with it. See yeah. what happens after 48 games. Yeah. Don't look at Christmas. You don't win leagues in Christmas. You don't get promotions in Christmas. So once he gets all back the injuries and everything like that, he did a remarkable job. He's still the same bow. He's still got the same passion. Yeah. But injuries hasn't helped. Um, but if we start being negative, then that will feed down. Yeah. And when, especially at home games. Listen to the man, John Robinson, legend. He says, <laughs> stay positive. We all got to stay positive. You know what you've got to do. Um, so, John, since obviously football, um, retiring and stuff like that, yeah. um, you've gone on to do your own academy. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about that. Well, we've obviously got the academy over in America, and then we've got, we started the John Robinson Soccer USA, which is the college taking kids from England to America. Um, we've actually had a great partnership again with. Our main one, which is Charlton, yeah. Charlton Community Trust. Um, their post 16 18 program is unbelievable with Michael Ward, who's yeah. great there. They've expand, expanded their stuff. So, we've actually got four players who have come from that um, who are looking to go next year to America. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we do showcase events all around Europe. We've just come from Geneva, Stockholm, Barcelona. We've got London events. We've been one um, around London, Sussex. So, so you can go. But yeah, so you go online um, and you can see it at www.johnrobinsonsoccerusa. Go Check online. out the link just here, go, boys. Go there, go see the ID camps. And we also have the exclusivity to the number one college recruiting portal in America. Okay, that's So we have that exclusivity to Europe. No other person has it. So it connects people with over 1,300 college coaches called College Fit Finder. Cool. So yeah, so it's good. It's awesome. exciting times. Right, guys right. and gals, that's been John Robertson in the van with me talking about Charlton, talking about all things Charlton, um, and he's got one last thing to say. Don't forget, you can get your Charlton Athletic Real Talk t-shirts from Brad, the man in the van. Oh, and this right. is going to be a special one, which is going to be, I don't know if it's that special, but someone may find it special. It's going to be signed by myself. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be signed by John Robertson, so if you want this t-shirt, it's going to be a special. Just DM me for details. Listen, thank you, John. Thank you for Pleasure, your time. Brad. Effort, mate. Good job, mate.